Hey, thanks for checking out the Solid Verbal. Now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel for college football content all off season long. Let's go to LSU. Yeah. Is Jaden Daniels the surefire starting quarterback over Garrett Nussmeyer? Yes. All right, next team. Next team. <laughs> <laughs> what interests you the most about LSU? Um, Masons. How about Masons? Um, Mason Smith on defense returns in the middle of a defense that could have used him for most of last year, certainly the first half of last year, as LSU's defense did get better. Uh, but they were not especially deep at defensive tackle, and they've hit the portal once again. Mason Smith is great. Mason Taylor, you remember, previously on Mason Taylor, he caught the pass that beat Alabama. Right. But this has not been an LSU team that, by and large, has utilized tight ends like Brian Kelly likes to utilize tight ends. And Mason Smith, now coupled with Malik Neighbors being back, a lot of youthful promise at receiver, offers Jaden Daniels something he likes, and that is short to intermediate passes. Mm. And so I think that's going to be not the bread and butter of Mike Denbrock's offense at LSU, but a healthy central element of the offense, an offense that struggled to run the ball consistently with running backs that doesn't have what I think to be true star power at running back. We'll see. Happy to be proven wrong. But to me, it's the, the most fascinating thing about LSU moving forward because I think their defense is going to be quite good. No. I think it's the old, like, uh, take a chance, take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. Like the old ABBA. Tick -a -tick song. <laughs> Tick -a -tick -tick. Gotta throw the ball. You, you know, Jaden Daniels was so safe last year. You got to make teams pay for stacking the box, for keeping safeties closer and closer to the box. And so that's where LSU really needs to take that next step. To be a more complete offense, to me, is the most fascinating thing about LSU because I think after a year where they struggled a bit along the offensive line but got better and looked like the future is super bright up front on offense, they need to take full advantage of the width and length of the field. And that, to me, is everything for LSU as, look, they won the West last year. It's a little bit of nitpicking. But with who they face this year and the angry defensive lines they face, I think we need to see a more complete Jaden Daniels experience because, as you alluded to, Garrett Nussmeyer can throw the ball, is enthusiastic and confident in throwing the ball downfield. Should he be all of the time? Perhaps not. A little <laughs> bit sloppy. Sure. But by and large... You know if that's something that LSU wants out of their offense that Garrett Nussmeyer is happy to oblige. Jaden Dan Jane Daniels, very, very good. Had some down moments last year, but again, the, the Jaden Daniels story is one of a quarterback good enough to beat anybody in this conference, including Georgia. Good enough, but doesn't mean he can't, but like, you know what I'm saying. So if we get that element of LSU's offense, we're now talking about an SEC champion, potential, ceiling for mm. LSU. Because I think they're going to smother teams on defense, even with losing guys like B.J. Ojolari up front, sack machines. We've gone all this time without mentioning Harry Perky, Harold Perkins. Our guy. The most fascinating, dangerous defensive player in college football. So when you include those players as wearing your uniform, LSU is in a wonderful place. And what he accounts for and what he can cover for on an LSU defense that now adds like Oregon State's best linebacker and Omar Spates, it's pretty great. It's I need pretty to do great. This. I don't want to keep playing it, overplaying it. It's but okay. Time we bring up Harry Perky. I mean, yeah. come on, we have to. He's stupid good. Here, here's my question for you now. Yeah, you did the preview, the deep dive for both LSU and Florida State. Yeah, and LSU Florida State is the big game of Week One. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what Fox would tell you about Colorado TCU, mm -hmm. I think it's LSU FSU. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know, which of these two teams do you favor in that game? Who would you pick? I'd give slight edge to Florida State. Slight, slight edge. I think the best of Jordan Travis is a little bit more interesting. I think their offensive skill is a little bit more interesting in this moment. But, man, I don't know. I think what LSU, I think LSU has a better chance, or I think LSU has a good chance to win this game on a neutral field in week eight. I think Florida State is better built to win it in week one, especially since it's in Orlando. I, I think that's a fair vantage point. LSU's over-under, by the way, is nine and a half. 
there are tough teams in the schedule outside of the FSU week one game. That's yep. a legitimately awesome matchup in week one. I'm so mm-hmm. glad we get it. But weirdly, it does not feel like that tough of a schedule to me. You know, going to Bama will be challenging. You're not going to be in the SEC West and come out of this thing without a tough road game here and there. But mm-hmm. otherwise, the true road games are Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Mizzou, which feels manageable. The rest of this thing is at home. And obviously, the Florida State game is neutral site in Orlando. There will be a strong Florida State contingent there, but LSU travels well. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I've got LSU in my SEC title game again. I've got them winning the West and going up and losing against Georgia. Mm-hmm. Just like they did last year. But I... Could obviously be talked off that. I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not as confident in LSU as I am in Georgia, but it feels like with what they've got coming back and knowing that they did that in year one under Brian Kelly, that right. the team's only gotten better. Yep. They haven't gotten worse. So that leaves me feeling very optimistic about their chances of getting back to Atlanta. Yeah, and we saw that depth, especially on defense, tested last year where Brian Kelly had to overhaul no. everything via the portal. And by the end of last year, you know, Texas AM decided finally to just give the ball to Devin a chain 73 times in that game felt like it and LSU got stomped and so I think they have the depth to make up for some of those deficiencies that they saw last year so I I think look next year might even be more special for LSU but as it stands now with Jaden Daniels experience and what they returned successfully from last year and the young guys who got that experience they're in great shape 